So for our final talk today, saving the best for last, a couple of weeks ago, Suze announced at SuzeCon in Prague that they were opening up and launching Suze Cloud Foundry, our newest distribution of Cloud Foundry. Yes, it's very exciting. So we're going to have Michael Miller, the president in Strategy Alliances and Marketing, join us on stage alongside Thomas Giacomo, the CTO. And we're going to have Frederick Lardinois, who's been kind enough from TechCrunch to join us and moderate a lively discussion. <laughs> Give Thomas the credit for that song choice. Credit for that song. A little Pantera. I never like heard that. anybody. I like that uh, music. It's a bit of an 80s theme going on here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> need some younger people on stage, probably. To yeah. <laughs> play some Kanye or something. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever the kids listen to these days. Um, when I think of SUSE, I think of a Linux distribution. One I installed maybe in the 90s, personally. Yeah. Um, why are you here? So, <laughs> we told you this would be a lively conversation, right? So, I, and I'm glad you were using SUSE in the 90s. I'm glad to hear that. So, <laughs> you know, at SUSE, we just celebrated our 25th year anniversary just last month, actually, at, at SUSEcon. And uh, 25 years is a long time, you know? And back then, that was the early days of, of Linux, the early days of open source. And obviously, we started out as a, as a Linux distribution with a focus on the enterprise and mission critical use cases. But over that 25 year period, an enormous amount has changed in the IT industry. And open source has really become the de facto model for innovation in infrastructure software. And so as that's happened, and all of these new software defined technologies have emerged, it was really a logical thing for SUSE to do, to build on our Linux roots, and then start to expand our portfolio and really, we think of ourselves now not as a Linux distribution vendor, but as a provider of software-defined infrastructure and application delivery technologies across a whole spectrum of software-defined technologies with this announcement of SUSE Cloud Application Platform, our Cloud Foundry distribution, just being the very latest. Yeah, and we are developers ourselves as well, so we understand the challenges that our customers are facing with development. And uh, we're also here uh, because it's Cloud Foundry. So we, we, we checked all the open source solutions. And by far, Cloud Foundry is the more ma most mature solution, better quality of code, the best community for providing such kind of solutions to developers. So it was, I mean, a no-brainer to, to join Cloud Foundry. And we actually d did that even before having a product. So we were involved in the community right. with the Bosch CPI interfaces yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. And now we are very happy to be part of the community have a product and contribute uh, to different projects. We're really. excited to have you here. Thank you. Now, to get to that point, though, you acquired a lot of the technology and talent as well, I think, from HPE. How, how did that come together as, a, as an acquisition, kind of a yeah. semi-acquisition? So that's a, and that's a question that, that I've gotten a lot. And so we, many of you probably know, we announced in March, SUSE acquired uh, OpenStack and Cloud, Act and Cloud Foundry technology and talent from HPE. So w we saw that as a great opportunity to bring great technology and great people into SUSE and help accelerate our existing plans and roadmaps. So obviously we've been in the OpenStack business already for many years from the beginning, uh, and we were on our way towards developing a Cloud Foundry distribution. And this was an ideal way for us to accelerate that whole process and some of those folks are here, and the technology is here, and we're really excited to, to have been able to enter this market faster uh, and bring a certified Cloud Foundry distribution to market quicker. And, and Thomas can probably comment a little bit more about some of the uniqueness of the technology and what that enables our customers yeah. to do. And, and, and it's unique in certain ways, and we want to bring that to the com community as well. So for instance, we are delivering Cloud Foundry as containers. So we are containerizing Cloud Foundry core and services. Uh, we also have a, a, a UI for Cloud Foundry that, it's, that is open source, and we are submitting that to the uh, CF incubation project. 
And that's the way we do, we do development. We develop upstream, and, uh, and we work with all the community members, and then we support our customers. We've been doing that for 25 years. We'll do that for Cloud Foundry, together with Kubernetes a lot. We're also very involved in Kubernetes. And one thing I wanted to mention, so we're in Switzerland. If you talk <laughs> chocolate, you have to say Swiss chocolate. So it's not only peanut butter and chocolate together, it's peanut butter <laughs> and Swiss chocolate. But that doesn't make any sense. We're already in Switzerland. That should be yeah, obvious. But the, it's whole, obvious. the whole chocolate thing didn't make sense to me because it's jelly, but that's a whole different <laughs> thing. Um, taking one step back, though, HPE wasn't really able to make it well. They sold it, so they weren't really able to make a business out of their Cloud Foundry distribution. Why do you think you can? So. You know, I, I'm not going to, and I'm not going to comment on Cloud Foundry or on HPE's <laughs> business or or what the, the decisions they've made. But I can speak for for SUSE, and you know, we're a fundamentally different type of company. As Thomas just noted, we're we are an open source business, and we have been for 25 years. And building on those Linux roots, our understanding of how to work upstream, productize open source innovation for the enterprise, uh, and bring it to market is completely different yeah. than than say a, a, a a well-established hardware vendor adding something like that to their portfolio. And now what we're going to do with that is we're going to integrate that across our other portfolio offerings, but at the same time, we're going to leave, uh, we're going to leave our partners and customers with the openness and the freedom of choice at all levels in the architecture to mix and match our technologies to create best-of-breed solutions. So that's another unique approach that we take with whatever we bring to market. Does that create some degree of confusion, though, for your customers if you have that many solutions for them? It creates it's choice, so that they can, <laughs> and sometimes confusion. <laughs> so you have to come with a, with a default stack that can meet their needs. But most of the time, they have existing pieces. So they might have a container infrastructure already. Yeah. They, have, they might have a VMware infrastructure. They might have hybrid cloud workloads. So they have something, and they need to accommodate that. And, uh, and Cloud Foundry is providing that flexibility, actually, to, to do so. We've been doing that at many layers of the stack, from OpenStack to Linux, and uh, including with non SUSE solutions, actually. We are, we are partnering with, with our competitors a lot. And it's because the, the IT world is diverse, de facto. The, and no, nobody is starting from scratch, almost. Uh, maybe in San Francisco, but not in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and, you need uh, more startups yeah. in Europe. <laughs> we, we have some. That's that. SAP. <laughs> yeah. um, Abby, from your perspective, what, what does SUSE bring to the Cloud Foundry Foundation? They bring a lot. So um, they are our first Linux distribution that's part of the community and now uh, a core contributor. So it brings a, a wealth of knowledge around Linux, Linux kernels that I'm real excited about. They're also um, the, only the second software distribution of Cloud Foundry. So that's really exciting as we think about choice and flexibility and portability. Um, that SUSE can bring to the table. And then finally, one thing that was really struck me as I got the chance to go to SUSE Con in Prague a couple of weeks ago, so thank you for the invite, Michael. Thanks for being there. Um, one thing that really struck me is I sat at lunchtime and got a chance to talk to the participants and a lot of your customers is how much your customers love SUSE. They just love everything about SUSE, and I feel like if oh, we you love them too. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> they love you. Uh, and if you can have that in your own community, and that's something you can bring to the Cloud Foundry community, I feel like our community can only benefit. You know, for me, I think about it, how do we make the community bigger, but also more inclusive, more open, and more welcoming to everyone. And I feel like that's something that SUSE can bring to our community as well. Are you saying there's not enough love in the Cloud Foundry community? <laughs> there's love. We can just use more. Yeah. You can never have too much love. Have too much. Never enough or chocolate. Fair it's kind of like chocolate, that Swiss chocolate. That <laughs> yeah, Swiss chocolate. Swiss yeah. chocolate and peanut butter. It's, it's yeah. You can never love, have too much of either. <laughs> Where do you go from there? Um, <laughs> you were talking about the customers and the love of your customers. But um, comparing your customers to the, to the Cloud Foundry community right now, do you feel like you're going to bring in new customers that the Cloud Foundry community does not see at this point? Or where do you see yourself there? Well, I think it's going to be, it's going to be both. So we have a lot of our well-established customers you know, that, are, that have been using SUSE technology for years are very interested in making cloud application platform part of their digital transformation. 
So they're entering a new, a new era. And I know we all overuse that term, digital transformation, but the reality is most of our enterprise customers have a mission or a vision of where they want to go. And, and you know, application development, both cloud native and bringing their, their existing applications forward, it's part of that vision. And maybe we'll bring some people starting from the infrastructure because we have a lot of customers doing that from, for storage or networking or, or, or clouds and, uh, and not only coming from the application directly, but they want to go there. And so we might bring that aspect as well to the yeah. Cloud Foundry community. And, and I think our, our vision of bringing together in a complementary way, as we've been talking about all morning, technologies like Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry, bringing those things together in a way that makes sense in the real world for customers that are trying to get stuff done, that's really appreciated by, by our customers. They want a practical, usable solution, not a religious debate about either or mutually exclusive approaches to technologies. They want to see these technologies integrated in a useful, practical way. Makes sense in a way like chocolate and peanut butter. It does, Makes indeed. Together. All right. Swiss right. chocolate. Swiss, Swiss chocolate. And Sorry. Nutella. Yeah. Swiss chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our time is up. Thank you. Very much. But thank you. And I want to thank all of you for, for joining us here today and Frederick for moderating our lively discussion. And we're really excited to have SUSE Cloud Foundry now part of our Cloud Foundry offerings. Thanks, Abby. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.